right, I am here with uh, Dr. Anglada, and we're at his office, his uh, Santa Ana office, yes. Santa Ana office. And um, first of all, Dr. Anglada, uh, thank you very much for uh, seeing me, taking the time out. I know you're very, very busy. It's my pleasure. Uh, being one of the most popular dentists in Costa Rica and San Jose, <laughs> you're extremely busy. So I appreciate this very much. Um, I just got a list of a few questions here um, that some of the people on the topics forums and uh, TripAdvisor are curious about. So I'll get right into it. Um, first of all, if you could tell me your um, your professional background, history, uh, schooling, and training like that. Sure. Um, okay, I, I graduated as a dentist from the University of Costa Rica in 1994. Uh, then I graduated as a specialist in implants from the University of Chile in 1998. Okay. And uh, basically, after that, once or twice per year, sometimes three times, uh, we go to mainly to your country, oh. to the US, sometimes Canada, sometimes Europe for upgrading oh, okay. um, to know what materials are good, what are not good. Uh, what techniques are new, what work, what don't work, what does not work. Um, so we, want, we have to be updated. If you don't update, you're out. Right. So right. that's what we want to do. <clears throat> um, we have to travel to do that because to bring to Costa Rica the big, the big researchers is too expensive. Oh, it yes. is less expensive for us to go there than to bring these guys here. I see. Last year, we, we um, there, there were some... some uh, professors from the University of, of Pennsylvania here, so that was a big effort from, from some people who brought me here. Mm -hmm. uh, but normally we have to go up there. Okay, great. Um, next question. Uh, when a person contacts you and asks you about what treatment plan is best for them, when they ask you about prices, uh, and, they, and they ask you just you know question after question after question, does it become overwhelming to answer uh, you know, a, just a bunch of emails, inquiries, and still perform your daily tasks that you need to do in the clinic? Well, it is, it is my work. Right. And uh, I know it sounds sadistic, but I enjoy my work. Right. <laughs> I enjoy the surgeries and I enjoy explaining, explaining people. If you get me going, I can, I can, I can talk a lot. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so, sometimes it's the, what can be overwhelming is the quantity. Mm -hmm. of, of persons wanting answers. <clears throat> so what I do is between patients, between surgeries, I answer the mails. I try to answer at least 48 hours, uh, a maximum to 48 hours after an mm -hmm. email came. Um, <clears throat> some questions or some help can be um, done by my treatment coordinator, like helping finding hotels, mm -hmm. go there first, uh, when to come, all that. Mm -hmm. I have I have bill for that. Um, but the dental, and especially the surgical questions, I want to answer them myself. Right. So, so I answer that myself with my own hands. That's, that's so right. between patients, weekends, and nights and mornings, I, I work on I work doing that. Very good. Now, when a person does contact you, is there something that a a, a person who's contacting you is there something that they can have um, can have ready? Something they can do prior to contacting you, so that the estimate process. Can go as smooth as possible, like sure. Yeah, go ahead. sure. The idea is if you're going to come to Costa Rica with me, I want my patients to be comfortable with the idea. So there, there are two. Let's say two, two kind of, of patients that come. Some come by word of mouth. Most of them come by word of mouth. So many of those know somebody who have come to me or somebody who knows somebody. So when they come, they know they already know they want me and they kind of trust me already. So they they just. Uh, try to explain what they need. Uh, we make an approximate estimate, and often they come with just an approximate estimate. So we take the x rays or the CAT scans here, uh, and we give the final price here. Okay. On the other hand, many patients want to know the exact price or very close to exact before they come. Right. So for those cases, I need an x ray, mm -hmm. especially a panoramic. Mm -hmm. If the panoramic is not very good, I will want periapical x rays. Mm -hmm. So if they can send me that, I can make one or more estimates are uh, really, really accurate. I'm not going to hand up, say 100% all the times, but most of the times it's a 100% accurate estimate. Oh, great. Yes. Fantastic. 
Um, if I have to sort of no, go ahead. If I make a mistake, I normally don't change estimates. If yes. the X-rays are good quality and recent, uh, the price is, is very close to 100 percent. So you, you stick to what you tell the person. Yes, great. I don't like changing numbers. Fantastic. Um, now, in your opinion, what do you think the percentage is of people who actually show up and come to you compared to the number of people who contact you? Do you find that you get many, many, many people contacting you, but maybe only a small percentage end up coming to see you, maybe because they, they were scared to come to Costa Rica for dental work? or or is it a pretty good percentage of people who contact you end up to come in? It is it's pretty good. I have never done, I cannot tell the exact number. Right. So that would not be fair to, to just guess, but, but it is, I don't know, maybe it's 50% of people who contact me will come. Right. And do you sometimes get the feeling, you sometimes find that people are, what's the term, maybe window shopping, just contacting many, many, many dentists? Yes, and, yes, yeah. but I don't care. I will answer the same. You answer? Yes. Right, yes. right. Um, now, uh, I heard, and I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I heard there's some type of um, organization, some type of uh, association that oversees the Costa Rica the dental um, here, and that they kind of um, have rules and regulations, you know, just like we do up in the States, we've got the American Dental Association. Okay, yes, yes. Um, now, is there a place, is there an association like that here? Yes, actually, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the Colegio, the dentist, mm -hmm. the board here. Mm -hmm. And it rules first, who is a dentist and who is not a dentist. You have to, to be subscribed there, and you have to show the university papers and all that. This right. is the government uh, way to, to control right. a dentist. And they will also control who is a specialist and who is not. Oh. Now, they have a list of prices that is not mandatory. Oh, okay. That is, is a, a recommendation of prices, Re but you don't have to follow it. Okay. It's just a recommendation. So, so, so prices are not ruled by them, but dentistry is, is ruled by, by them. I see. Yes. So a particular uh, doctor or clinic can charge as much as they want or as cheap? As, a, as, as yes. inexpensive as they want for a certain procedure. Yes, it actually is, is, is going to be a probably a market decision how the prices go. Okay, great. Um, that right, Raymond was saying something, I thought of a question that's not on my paperwork here. I'll get back to see if I can remember it. Um, because of uh, my blog and how popular it's becoming, I mean, I hate to say that, it sounds like I'm bragging, but I have been getting a lot of people visiting my website and a lot of people asking questions. But um, I've been getting a lot of emails from people with questions. Uh, there are some that uh, are looking only for the lowest price possible. They say, well, do you know which dentist offers the lowest price possible? And in my opinion, that's not a good way to shop for a dentist, trying to find the absolute cheapest. Um, what is your opinion on that? Um, well, I am more expensive than, than most, as far as I know, but I recommend to ask for details. Uh, the guarantee on the, the implants, yes. for example, the brands, the brands of implants, the brands of the porcelain, uh, the training of the patient. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, the training of the, the doctor. dentist, the doctor, and uh, of course the kind of facility they have. And the, the price is important, of course, so uh, the idea is to have a, to reach a balance between quality, looking for the best quality, and the lowest price. Right. As a patient, I'm talking about, about the patients, so I recommend patients to, to look for that, for, for as for guarantee, as for materials, uh, and, and, and research a lot to dentists. I think a lot of people don't realize that there is different types of porcelain. Yes. That there's different, you know, I think a lot of people, and I, I did too, when I first started researching, I thought porcelain was porcelain. But there is inferior and yes. superior porcelain. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, I, it's, I, I think that people who are only shopping for the cheapest, I think with a lot of things, you kind of get what you pay for. I mean, it's a cliche, it's a, it's a very often used phrase, but I really do think you get what you pay for. You know, yes, if, you, if you want to find the cheapest, you're probably going to get cheap material. Yes, the, the idea is to provide a, a patient with a very, very 
good quality, a, a good quality of work as in any specialty clinic in the world by charging uh, Costa Rican prices. So that would not be cheap, but would be inexpensive. The problem is when you use bad materials to cut the prices, that's when the problems can rise, not in the short period of time, but maybe in the middle of, of long or long period of time. So I recommend to, to ask for that. Actually, uh, it, it is very important. As a patient, that's what I would ask. Okay. Um, now, you, you kind of briefly went over this already, uh, training in the United States. But um, is this considered, for dentists who practice in Costa Rica, is getting some type of training in, in, in the United States considered a must-do for dentists? Is it considered that if you want to succeed as a dentist here in Costa Rica that you must um, stay up to date with the training? I would say not necessarily the states. Some countries in, in, in uh, Western Europe oh. are leaders in, in research also. Uh, so so the, the, the access to the researchers is the important part. You want to know what works, you want to know what doesn't work. Many materials come to the market with no research. Mm -hmm. So I don't want my patients to be the guinea pigs. So I want uh, materials placed in my patient's mouth that have proven to work for many, many years. So that's where you want to go. People who they made that research for, research for many years and prove, is proven what is working and what is not working. Or what tends to work but you're not sure so you don't want to use it yet. Right. <clears throat> But also, do you feel that having that on your resume, that to be able to tell patients that you've had training in America, do you find that that with some patients that eases their eases their um, being worried about coming to Costa Rica? If all of a sudden you tell them, "Well, oh, I've had training in in the United States." Um, I mean, it's got to ease some people, correct? Probably, yes. Probably, yeah. yes. It is. Uh, the United States has been always been the, the leader of, of, of research. And it is a leader in, in dentistry worldwide. Mm -hmm. And it is a leader in, in, in implants worldwide. Uh, so, yes. Uh, yeah, the, I, I would say that that make, make people comfortable. But my main training was not, in, was not done in the States. I right. just do the upgrade in the States. Right. And my patients are comfortable with my with my uh, university background, so um, yes, I think it is important to do it, um, but not for the patients to be comfortable, but for the patients to know that we're doing what is being done best in the world. Right. right. I know when I get questions from people, um, often I'm asked, uh, "Well, who did you choose, and did your dentist?" get training in the United States and I often reply that you know it's good training can be can be obtained in other countries um, the United States is not number one in every single category in the world you know Americans like to think we're number one in everything that we're better than, than everything and I think um, once a patient a prospective patient can get past that and realize that good health care good dental care can be found in other countries, just as good, well, but for better prices. Something you know. very interesting the United States has done has they have exported the quality of, of their universities. That's a good way to put it, yes. And, and uh, yes, but uh, there is a university training that is very important, and the quality um, is important too. There are good universities and they are not that good, and uh, they have done that. They have not been selfish, and they have exported the quality of, 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 uh, of knowledge or how to teach that knowledge. But when it comes for the upgrading, that's a different. That's the second part of your of your uh, background, and and in that sense, you cannot wait for a book to be translated. You cannot wait for a, for a, for a research to to reach certain part of the world. You have to go where the research is. That's that's so. That's the important, and, and the United States have always open arms to, to, to us who want to go there and learn. Good point, good point. Okay, last question. Uh, what is some good advice, or what is the main advice that you could give to patients looking to come to Costa Rica for dental work? Uh, well, first of all, research the country. Costa Rica is a peaceful country, it's a state of right. 
and it's a touristic country, so most people will combine dentistry and tourism. Then uh, choose uh, a dentist that makes them comfortable. Uh, there are very good dentists in Costa Rica, there are very good specialists in Costa Rica, and, uh, and uh, then choose between the ones they are feeling comfortable with. Uh, they have research, uh, I, I recommend to research a lot, and once, once they choose to come and know, they, they will receive a good treatment here. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. My, my pleasure. Thank you for your time.